So I've been a fan of the Devil May Cry series for a long time, but I didn't really enjoy the first Devil May Cry game I played. So in the interest of attracting more and more people to one of my favorite franchises in video games, I'm making the starter guide to help you figure out which game you should probably start with. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the games I recommend I consider the best in the franchise, they're just the best place to start out for newcomers. Ones that they're likely to beat and continue playing other games in the series. That doesn't mean I just recommend the easy ones, because some of the harder games in the series aren't trying to be hard on purpose. And I'll get into what I mean by that later. So strap in, bitch, and we'll get this party started. So Devil May Cry 1 came out in 2001 and essentially started the hack and slash genre. It's got some really challenging but rewarding combat if you put in the time to get good at it. But there are a lot of other elements of the game that don't make it very user friendly. Devil May Cry 1 started out as a sequel to Resident Evil 3, so a lot of elements were reused from the older RE game. Mainly the fixed camera angles, but I'll come back to that later. It's also got some really repetitive bosses that in some cases you have to fight more than three times per playthrough and some of the most inconsistent levels in any hack and slash game to date. I wouldn't necessarily say that the story is weak, but there isn't much of it. I think out of 23 missions, you only get about six or seven cutscenes where any two characters talk to each other. And I'm sure you're already aware of the fill your dark soul with light meme. I should have saved you. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! This is a game I'd recommend for veteran Devil May Cry players. On paper, Devil May Cry 2 has a lot of positive things going for it, but in execution, it really falls flat. Its open environments do a lot to mitigate the fixed camera angle problems. It has a customizable devil trigger mechanic and introduced Bloody Palace, which is essentially like an endless challenge tower, which becomes a series staple. Unfortunately, you're probably not going to spend that much time in Bloody Palace because the melee combat changed a lot since Devil May Cry 1 and it's not as easy to juggle enemies because they'll usually go flying at the end of the most basic combos. This encourages players to use guns mainly, which are really overpowered. Apparently that's because this game's development started out as some type of Tomb Raider clone or competitor, and because of that even new players can take out most of the bosses with your level 1 Ebony and Ivory. Somehow. This game managed to have even less story than Devil May Cry 1. Even when you do watch cutscenes where Dante's talking to someone, he doesn't do a lot of talking. This starts a pattern with the rest of the Devil May Cry games of Dante changing personalities in every iteration. In Devil May Cry 2, Dante has a quiet and stoic personality. Because this game takes place so late in the original timeline, I definitely wouldn't recommend newcomers starting here. Devil May Cry 3 is a prequel to Devil May Cry 1 and introduces a lot of new mechanics to the series. Its emphasis on high execution, fast paced gameplay is incredibly rewarding if you put in the time to learn the advanced combo mechanics. Aside from having 10 different weapons, which is the most in the series, Devil May Cry 3 has the most diverse arsenal available to Dante. While it may be the fan favorite, Devil May Cry 3 isn't perfect gameplay wise. It introduced the style system, which ultimately lets players have more control over how Dante plays, but you can't switch between the styles during gameplay, only between missions or at shops. But where the first two Devil May Cry games fell short in their story department, DMC3 is definitely not lacking there. In my opinion, it has the best story in the original timeline. Dante's personality in DMC3 is what a lot of fans consider to be the classic version of the character. Impulsive and hot-blooded, Dante really lives up to his sword's name, Rebellion. Devil May Cry 3 is definitely the first game I'd recommend newcomers start with. Devil May Cry 4 was a huge change of pace from Devil May Cry 3. It stars a new protagonist, Nero, with a demonic arm. This demonic arm allows Nero to grapple enemies from far away and zip around during platforming sections. That isn't the only improvement that Devil May Cry 4 offers on-the-fly style switching so you don't have to switch them between levels or at shops. 
Unfortunately, DMC4 has even less weapons than DMC3 did, and the ones that are there are much weaker and less interesting than their DMC3 counterparts. The disappointment doesn't stop there because of DMC4's heavy emphasis on backtracking, really annoying puzzles, and very repetitive bosses. DMC4's story somehow manages to add more plot holes to the Devil May Cry continuity, as well as coming off as more of a filler arc. Dante's personality changes again, this time to be more of a parody of his DMC1 personality, I guess, but it comes off as pretty corny for the type of game this is. I really wouldn't recommend newcomers start with this game, mainly because you're likely to come out more confused than you were when you came in. DMC Devil May Cry is a reboot for the Devil May Cry franchise. It follows DMC3's example in many ways, but the most important one to me is the weapon variety. It offers 8 melee weapons with different balancing properties, as well as 3 different ranged weapons. Having said that, the guns are pretty weak, and I honestly think this may have been an overcorrection when looking back at how strong DMC2's guns were. The reboot added a lot of new elements to the DMC formula, and the most beginner friendly of those is the practice mode and the ability to try out new moves before you buy them. It also has the most functional platforming sections in the series, but I'll get back to that later. The DMC reboot definitely has the best looking environments out of the entire hack and slash genre, as well as a more character driven narrative like DMC 3. Another callback to DMC3 is Dante's personality. He's back to being that rebellious, trash-talking punk that's often seen as his classic personality. The biggest reason why I would definitely recommend this game to newcomers is because like Devil May Cry 3, it's the beginning of its respective timeline and it has a controllable camera. Now you might not think that's a big deal, but considering DMC is the only Devil May Cry game that has functional platforming and in all the Devil May Cry games, the majority of Dante's attacks are relative to which direction he's facing and which direction the camera is facing. Meaning you don't have to fight the camera as well as the enemies in your 3D hack and slash. I honestly don't know why that took three sequels and a reboot to understand. But from my experience with the demo, Devil May Cry 5 is already following the reboot's example in that regard. In the end, the DMC reboot did a really good job adapting the story of the original Devil May Cry trilogy while expanding on a lot of the story elements in Devil May Cry 3. It's essentially what you'd get if you mix Devil May Cry 3 and Persona 5 together. So it's pretty easy to recommend to new players. Alright, now that that's done, I can get back to waiting for Devil May Cry 5 to come out. Which is today! Lucky me.